Well, good evening. So, um, we're gonna we're gonna cover. Uh, we're gonna do some of the birth story of Jesus. I figure I can do some Christmas stuff in the evenings, right? Um, but I wanted to. I wanted to do something a little bit different, because um, usually when you when you when you talk about and and I don't want to use this term because I mean the people in the Bible are real, but when we talk about the biblical characters, the the people that are there, you know we 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 can find heroes. You, you can find, you know, David. He's he's a, he's a hero type. He you know he slays a gal- he slays a giant, he kills lions, you know he he's he's a hero kind of guy. Um, you you've got uh, people that that we want to to be like or or admire. When 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 you look at somebody like Moses and 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 what they were to accomplish and things that they overcame to do what. They did, and, and we see how God moves in their lives, and even even men like Elijah and Elisha being uh, non-literary prophets, but having uh, ha- having you know stories written about them, and uh, just seeing what they did, and we we, we can kind of have these character characters that we that we identify with and that we we want to be like and as as I get older and I, I'm reading different stories and, and and identifying with different people there there's one guy that I just I keep finding myself that I, I want to be like him and that guy is is Joseph. That that the the Joseph of of Jesus' father, or earthly father anyway. And when, when I when I read about him, I you know more and more I start to go. I want to be like him. And I want to I want to cover why. So let's we're going to look at. Um, story of uh, of of Joseph and coming out of Matthew uh, chapter 1 we're going to read verses 18 through 24 and then we're going to talk about some of the characteristics that we find of Matthew just in this small pa- or sorry of Joseph just in this small passage out of the book of Matthew so Matthew chapter 1 we'll start in verse 18 before we do let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this time. God, we know that uh, we do we can do none of this without you, Lord. And so we pray that you will grant us wisdom, grant us a willing spirit, Lord, so that we may gain from you to learn from you, to learn about you so that we may follow you all the more, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. Amen. So it says, the birth of Jesus came about this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant from the Holy Spirit. And so her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. But after he had considered these things, An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son. And they will name him Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the Lord's angel had commanded him. He married her. So, I want to focus in, like I said, on on Joseph. 
and and pull some of the descriptions of him and the aspects of his life and and who he is out of this passage. And so I, I know that there there's so much in that passage, you know, to to talk about the Holy Spirit or to, to talk about Mary or, or how the Holy Spirit comes upon her and how she's conceiving and the Immaculate Conception. I know that we could go into all of that. I want to focus here on, on Joseph and, and what might be happening to him and what might be going on with him. And so, and, and as I said, he, 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 he's becoming more and more as I read the scriptures, more and more one of my... Uh, I don't want to say favorites because I mean they're they're, they're people. They're, it's not a storybook, you know. It's not it's not like reading, uh, you know, a, a series of books or a book series that and you're like, well, th- I, I identify with this character. This is my favorite character. They're not characters. They're people. But the characteristics that he shows is characteristics that that I want in my life. And so the first thing that we're going to look at is that Joseph is righteous. And this is what it said about him in Matthew uh, 1, 19. It said, so her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man. And so it, it calls him, it says that Joseph is a righteous man. And I, I want to I think about that for just, just a moment. Like, if, 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 I, if I want to be like him, then what, what, is that, what does that mean? I mean, the Bible calls him a righteous man. It doesn't use this term a lot for people. I mean, David's never described as righteous. It it uses it for Abraham. And it uses it for Noah. And here it uses this term for uh, for Joseph, that, that he's righteous and and he's considered righteous and 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 by who is kind of what i think like well well her husband being a righteous man meaning what meaning that when people look at him they see him as a person who does the right things and then to have this description is also this comes from God, who's saying, when I look at him, I see that he is doing the right things. And so this description is that her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man. What, what, what makes him this? Look, look, at the, look at what it says. Joseph is not wanting to disgrace her. Now, you know this. I've, I've heard this preached a hundred times. You've heard that he has every right to take her out into the city square and have her stoned. But, but he, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to do that to her. He, he, he doesn't want to do that to her family. He's, he is, he's, he's not thinking of, of himself. Look, look, he says, a righteous man not wanting to disgrace her publicly. He's not thinking of himself. I mean, it, th- there is some aspect of that. But he would be considered a righteous man in their society if he says she has been unfaithful. Because what, what we know what's going to happen. We just read it. An angel is going to appear to him after, the, after what he knows. That she is with child. It's not the angel comes to him and says, hey, your wife is going to be with child even though you've never been with her. He knows that she's with child before the angel comes to him. And before the, so he has decided, I don't want to do that to her. And, but, He is set to divorce her secretly. That we're going to take care of this. We're not going to put our our dirty laundry out there, as we would say. We're not going to air it. He's going to do it in secret. He doesn't want to disgrace her, her family. 
people, he's considered righteous. In 1 John 3, 7, it says, Children, let no one deceive you. The one who does what is right is righteous. Just as he is righteous. Joseph is considered righteous because he wants to do what is right. I want to be like Joseph. I want to be considered righteous because he wants to do what is right. He says, the one who does what is right is righteous. When we do the right thing, even though it may not come out in our favor, this isn't going to come out in his favor. It, it, it could come out in his favor if he publicly destroys her. But being right doesn't necessarily mean that everything's going to come out in my favor. And he wants to do what is right. And he's considered righteous. Habakkuk 2.4 says, Look, his ego is inflated. He is without integrity. Look at this part. But the righteous one will live by his faith. So, it is by faith that Joseph does the things of integrity. So here we have this description of he is a righteous man. And then we've got these two passages of scripture that tell us what the characteristics of a righteous person is. There in 1 John 3, 7, the righteous, uh, they will do what is right. They will do what is considered the right thing to do. They'll weigh their options. They'll do what is right. And then Habakkuk, it says the righteous one will live by faith. So here we have Joseph being called righteous, which means what? That he wants to do what is right. And when it comes to God, he will live by faith. I will trust. I will lean on him. Joseph is righteous. This is why he continually becomes more and more one of my favorite to read about. And, there, and then I know that there's not a lot written about him. He seems to uh, disappear after Jesus is 12 years old. He's not mentioned again. But I think there's a reason for that. Because Joseph is not Jesus' father. There's a, uh, there, there's a Brad Paisley song that you've probably heard. It says, I want to be half the dad that he didn't have to be. And I, you know, I kind of think about that, like, you know, that that's the situation that G, that Joseph is put in. He doesn't have to be this. He he can disgrace her. He he can even divorce her. But he, we know what he chooses. Let's look at some more about Joseph's life. Because Joseph is afraid. In Matthew 1.20, the angel says to him, says, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. That word afraid is uh, phobos in, in the Greek. And phobos, we, we know it's the, the phobia. It's where we get the word phobia. So if you're afraid of spiders, you have arachnophobia. Okay, you hate spiders, you want to run from them. Okay, and so right, nobody likes spiders, but but uh, so it says to him, the angel says, don't run from this. Don't be afraid. Because what is he doing? I can't take her as my wife. People know. They'll, they'll know that I, I, in his mind, 
what he's thinking. If I take her to be my wife, they'll know that I've been cuckold. Okay? They, they'll know that this has happened to me. And, and, and it won't be good for him. So he, he's, he, he's afraid. He's going to run from this. Because he's, he, he's said that he's, he's he, in his heart, he, he has secretly dis, decided to divorce her. But the angel comes and says, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. And we know what he does. We know what Joseph does. Because we know that he is going to, we're going to get to this, but we know what he's going to do. So I want to look at just some scriptures here. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, it says, There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears is not complete in love. Several times in this passage in scripture, it, it, it contrasts fear and love. And so what we are going to see in Joseph is that the angel is saying to him, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife and love her. Now, he, he, he's, th th this passage of scripture hasn't been written for Joseph. But he's going to live this out. Th this is where he's going to settle. For there, there is no fear in love. He loves God. He loves his wife. And the angel is telling him, don't be afraid. Love me. Remember, he, he lives by faith. He's righteous. He's going to live by faith. And that faith is, says that I'm going to love God so much that I don't have to be afraid of what he calls me into. Because when we love God that much, we don't have to fear the world or what's going to happen. If he's calling us to it, if he's saying, come and follow me, then we don't have to be afraid because of our love that we have for God. Because of Joseph's love, the angel is telling him, don't be afraid. This love that you have is going to cast out fear. Don't be afraid. If Joseph is afraid to do the right thing, he will not be righteous and he will not be complete. If Joseph gives in to his fear. Now, see, we read this knowing exactly what he does. We, we know. And so this, when I, this is what, what, what really seals it for me, is when I read about him and this is going on. If I was in that situation, I'm going to be afraid. I'm going to have fear that, God, do you know what will happen if I take this woman to be my wife? They're going to know things about me. They're going to gossip about me and my family. And for Ever. I mean, think about this. If, if, if he loves her, he wants to take her. That's not his child. Okay? Now, now I'm, I'm, there's too many little kids in here. <laughs> you know what's going to be said about him. He's going to have a bass child. You got me? That's what's going to be said. And there's going to be fear in that. Don't be afraid, Joseph. The love of God, your love for her will cast out your fear. Psalm 23, 4 says, Even when I go through the valley of through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. See, this is a passage of scripture that Joseph has. And I can only imagine when the angel says, do not be afraid. I don't know if this comes to mind, but he knows this passage. He's heard this passage, the Psalm 23. 
Do not be afraid. Does his mind reflect on that? That even though I'm going to go through this valley, I won't be afraid because your staff, your rod, they guide me. That I'm following what God has called on me. Joseph understands that because God is with him, he has nothing to fear. I don't know if I can say the same. This is why he, he is such a, a strong character to me. Probably one of the strongest that I can think of in character and integrity in all of Scripture. Because of what he does. So let's look at what he does. Don't be afraid, Joseph. And I love this line because Joseph does as Lord commands. In Matthew 1.24, it says, When he awoke, he did as the Lord's angel had commanded him. Oh my goodness. He did what was commanded him. Don't be afraid. I know what you've planned. Joseph is planned because he's a righteous man. He doesn't want her to be publicly disgraced. If she's publicly disgraced, remember, she can be like the woman accused of adultery that Jesus confronted. And he doesn't want that for her. But I'm going to get myself out of this deal. Because... I want a good woman. I come, I'm considered a righteous man. I'm good from a good family, probably. I mean, respected. I want a good, respectable woman. She's not it. She's not faithful. I mean, that's the conclusion that any of us in here would draw. guarantee you woman comes up to you and says i'm pregnant well how did that happen i have no idea yeah right okay none of us are taking the route of well maybe it was an immaculate conception because it doesn't happen and so when he's told don't be afraid take her as your wife he changes everything that he had planned. And he does as the Lord commands him. Deuteronomy 28, 15. Says this, but if you do not obey the Lord, your God, by carefully following all his commands and statutes, I am giving you today. All these curses will come and overtake you. See, it is the fear of the Lord that is a basis for Joseph's faith. This is one of the things that I admire about it. It never says that he has the fear of the Lord. It never says that about him. But when you look at the fear of the Lord and you study the fear of the Lord, what it means, you're going to see it in Joseph. The fear of the Lord is what drives him. And look at what it says here in Deuteronomy. If you do not obey the Lord your God by carefully following all his commands and statutes, I am giving you today all these curses will come and overtake you. And I think sometimes we treat stuff like this in the scripture as, well, that's not the way God works now. But what happens if we reject God and what he has for us? I've, I know I've used him before, and I told you, one of, the, one of the saddest people that I've ever, uh, when I say saddest, like one of the saddest stories I've ever come across, what was a man who told me, at the, he was in his 40s when he told me this, but at the age of 16, he says, God called me into ministry, and I didn't go. I didn't do what God had called me to do. And his life was a mess. It was shambles. And he couldn't hold on to relationships. 
He had kids that hated him, wouldn't talk to him. And he would say, well, you know, my ex-wife, she fills him full of lies. Couldn't hold on to a job. He had a gambling problem. And he had a massive onset of Parkinson's. Yeah, he's in his 40s. And I'm going, what happens when we don't do what God asks us to do? And I'm not saying that God is some spoiled little brat kid that if you don't play his game his way, he's going to take his toys and go home. That's not what's going on. But God says this to his people. If you don't follow my commands, if you don't follow my statutes, I will bring upon you the curses. And what happened to Israel when they didn't follow the commands of God and and obey his statutes? He brought about the curses upon them that he told them he was going to do. And they were exiled. God brings them back. And now Joseph is living in a time where the people have been brought back. They've drifted away again. They're occupied by Roman authority. And people are talking about the end times. That's what's going on when Jesus is born. People are like, oh, the Messiah is coming. It's got to be really soon. The reason they had been talking about it is because they were commanded about the um, abomination that causes desolation. And that's what happens in that 400 intertestamental period. The Roman army comes in, sets it right up in the temple. Boom, here it is. There was a big war, a big fight. And Joseph knows all this. And in this time, in it, now, now keep in mind also, in a time where God has been silenced, 400 years appears to Joseph and says, listen to me. Don't be afraid. This isn't a this isn't a common phenomenon. He knows nobody who has spoken to God. He doesn't know anyone who has seen an angel. He has never heard the words of a prophet spoken. And God appears to him. Well, an angel appears to him. And says to him, don't be afraid. Do what God's going to ask of you. And he does it. In Psalm 81, 13, it says, if only my people would listen to me and Israel would follow my ways, I would quickly subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Joseph understands that God has a way of working things out for those who follow God's commands. Does he know how this is going to end? No. All he knows is that he's been told, hey, just take her as your wife. Take her as your wife because what is happening in her is through the Holy Spirit. Meaning, she's not been unfaithful to you. That would be hard to believe. Even if God appears to him and says, look, she's not unfaithful. And an angel appears, that's still got to be hard to believe. Because that doesn't happen. But the scriptures are going to start to come to him. And he's going to go, whoa. What does the scripture say? A virgin will be with child. And he believes That it's his wife. Which is why it says he didn't have relations with her until after the child's born. Why? Because if he does, people will say, you know that's your child. And he's like, "Uh uh-uh, this is God's child. Look at the faith of this man. How strong and righteous 
he is. And I start to go, I want my life to look like his. And everything Joseph does will lead to one thing. Matthew 121. And it says, and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. You are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Joseph is given the gospel right there. That the name of Jesus, there will be no other name in which men will be saved, but through the name of Jesus. And you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from his sins. I don't know if you know this. Jesus is a Greek word. Jesus probably never, ever heard the name Jesus. Okay? It would have been pronounced Jesus, which is the Greek version of the word Yeshua which is the Aramaic word that he was probably going by his entire life. People called him Yeshua, which is Aramaic, which is the Aramaic form of the word Joshua, which means deliverer. The same as Joshua of the Old Testament. He will bring his people into the promised land. Moses doesn't do it. Joshua does it. He delivers his people. You will name him Yeshua. Because he will deliver his people. Look at the faith of Joseph. He trusts in God. So much. He's given the title righteous because he does what God commands him to do. And this isn't going to be the last time. God's going to appear to him in a dream and say, get up, go to Egypt because Herod's going to kill him. So he flees with his wife and child to Egypt. And then in a dream, God's going to appear to him again. The angel's going to go to him and he's going to say, go back for those who were wanting to kill the child. They're dead. Herod died. And he goes back. Never once does he falter in doing what God calls him to do. So, that's why I keep going, looking back and going, I want to be like Joseph. Does he call fire from the sky? No. Does he part water? No. Does he do any miracle? No. He just does one thing. He does what God asks him to do. We could only hope, pray to be like Joseph. Let's pray. Father God. flawed because we know that he's a sinner and the only way he can come to, to salvation to be truly declared righteous is to acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior but God that he will follow you without question God, that we would be like that, to chase after and follow you without question, to get up 
and go. God, help us to be that church. Help us to be those people that will follow you unconditionally. God, we thank you and we praise you. Amen.